Hello everyone, Rurikon here coming at you with another first impressions video and today we're going to be taking a look at Arclash Legacy. So you guys might remember that I did tell you guys that I was interested in this particular game and I had my eye on it for quite some time now. As a matter of fact, while I was at Gamescom, I was able to get a presentation with the developers for this game. And uh, they then provided me with a preview key so that I could do my first impressions video. So what's the game all about? So this is actually a fairly interesting uh, tactical RPG, uh, which is something that I actually like quite a bit. Ooh, looks like we got a pretty tough fight ahead of us, which is great, I guess. You guys are just going to see me fail and die at the very first couple of minutes of the video. But before we actually get to that part, I wanted to get a little bit more into the technical aspects of how the game works. So basically the point of this game is to actually um, plan out as much as you can of your fight ahead of time so like um well and also during the fight itself plan out your next moves because the the game basically uses a system to um to pause the game by pressing space a lot of uh tactical rpgs use this system it's nothing particularly um particularly new by any stretch of the imagination but yeah basically it uses this and then you can issue out orders, and you can also stack orders, which not every game does that, though, which is very cool. I do enjoy stacking uh, orders, like, for instance, you can tell this guy to go here, here, and here, and then you let go, and he will go all over. And you can also do that for skills, like, say, you have this skill, which is, um, basically, if you just press it like this, the character will start channeling the skill, but you can also do this. And that will actually get the character to go down there to that spot before... Uh, doing that skill, but I don't actually want him to do it. Because that would be a, a waste of, uh, of whatever resource this guy uses. Um, either way, so you have a party of four. At all times, you will always have at least four members, I believe. Uh, you can switch that, you can swap that party out uh, if you want. We have uh, two guys uh, benched right now, which is Lech Loris and Denzi. Uh, because I like these three, and they're kind of essential since Wenderu is a healer. Uh, Naka is a tank, and nothing really makes as much damage as Nella right now. I mean, sure, like Loris has a nice AoE and whatnot, but Nella still just kicks ass. So this is the, the party that I tend to roll with, and obviously this guy gets a free pass because he's a dwarf. That's just the way these things work. If you're a dwarf, you get a free pass with me. Either way, you can swap these around as much as you want, like I can even swap like Loris for the tank, and now like Loris would be in the party. And you can put, like, uh, Denzi on place of or you can just put Denzi here and put, like, Loris on top. And now we'll play without a tank, because that is a great idea. Of course not, let's be honest. I just wanted to show you guys that you can swap out as much as you want. There are no penalties for it, as far as I'm aware. I don't believe that you can swap out during combat. I'm pretty sure you can't swap out during combat. And you can also respec whenever you want. Which is very interesting, because not all games allow you to basically respec whenever the hell you want. Speaking of which, we actually have a couple of points to put down, as it seems. We have a point on our tank, and I'm thinking if I should go with more plasmatic silica, or with this. What this does, the Obscure Blood, is it basically allows me to uh, gain um, health with uh, with my tank and it also gives me a life leech now all of these characters have different talent trees that you can pick and choose and all of these uh, talents are usually around the particular four skills that each character has each character has these four skills which are their base skills and then you can basically upgrade them as you see fit you can max out two of these paths total you can max out more than two uh, from the moment that you go uh, a certain way, like for instance, you'll notice that on this path I went left instead of right. You can't you can't access the right side anymore, so you can't actually like fully max out this. Nope, no dice. You can max out uh, two of these, and uh, you'll still have some points left over, I believe. Let me just see what this one does. Increases the quantity of health that is drained. Increases healing on activation. Just pretty much improves the skill all around. Here we have physical and magic armor by 100%, increases the duration of the effect, and this spreads the effect to the allies. Now I'll just take the duration to effect, thank you very much. Uh, do I have anything else on this guy? Yes I do. I've been maxing out this particular aura on this guy, because this is an aura, it's always activated, so it's pretty sweet. Allows Denzel to inflict 10% of his uh, attack damage on the MP of its target. The armor bonus is applied to magic armor as well as physical armor. Allows Denzin to steal health when attacking. Well, that's a no-brainer. 
Uh, she's got nothing to upgrade. You've got something to upgrade. Oh, man, I'm, I'm really not a fan of this healer. I'm hoping that we get a better healer because I just I don't like him that much. Uh, let's see. I'm not so sure which one I like the most. Because this one makes it do damage, but I have to actually kill the guy. Hmm... Yeah, I guess we'll stick to this one, but what I really want to upgrade is this time we're going to upgrade the heal, because still haven't upgraded the heal, not even once. Ooh, man, Lek Loris, dude, you've got four points. But I'm really not going to manage all of these. I just want to manage the ones that I'm using. Okay, Friends has no points, so that is going to be it. So you guys get a pretty decent feel for what the talent trees are. You already know that you can switch... Uh, party members at will. So now let's show you guys some of the combat. I'm actually playing in normal mode because uh, I was playing in hard and I started getting my ass kicked a little bit too often so I was just like okay let's swap back to normal. Either way when I have this particular guy the warrior of Belial I kind of like to nuke him down first however this time we also have a black priest. General increases healing received by nearby allies reduces healing received at each attack. What else can he do? He does increases naturally by 25% healing received as allies. Uh, each attack he makes, Black Priest reduces 25% healing received by his target for two seconds. Wow, okay, that's cool. So yeah, you can basically study your enemies like this if you really want to get all tactical about it. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and put our tank directly on top of the Belial Warrior there. Then I'm going to try and taunt that priest, which I'm not sure that is going to work. And after that, I'm going to straight up go for my Obscure Blood, and then my Plasmatic Silica. Plasmatic Silica basically increases my physical and magical resistance, and the Obscure Blood is the thing I told you guys about that heals me, and also causes me to steal life for a bit. You, my pretty sorceress, you're going to go straight for a nuke. Straight up. And friends, we're going to have to plan you as we move along. So let's see. Okay, friends, this guy's already there. Ooh, I don't like what he's doing. What you doing? Black Priest blocks the use of control skills of his target for 15 seconds. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm actually going to put friends directly on top of the priest here. This shot is basically something that reduces the guy's armor. And right after it, you are going to pop him with a nice shot of your cannon. I love this dwarf, by the way. You guys know me and dwarves. Oh, what? He dodged it. God damn it, shouldn't have stacked so many things at the same time. Either way, this might become problematic, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a nourishing on here. She was going to taunt, but she got knocked down immediately. This this guy's going to waste this shot. I can't cancel it because he already began channeling it, so that's going to be a problem. You can't actually cancel channeled abilities, which is really bad. Well, it's not really bad from a gaming standpoint, it's just bad for you if you happen to do what I did, which is just stack two abilities and then get absolutely nothing for it. Oh, we need to get rid of this priest right away. What's this? Skeleton Mage, Skeleton Archer. And he's going to heal? Okay, yeah, he definitely needs to go. I'm actually going to pull a little bit of a stunt here. Which is, let's just do that, and then that, that. This is basically an attack. The problem with this attack is that it also steals health from my tank, so we're going to have to pop the heal on him as soon as that goes off. What's wrong with you, dude? Do the skill I told you. He's probably taunted. There, heal that. I don't think you're going to get to even do my skill, so we're just going to... Kill this guy, please. Thank you. Okay, that guy's dead. You're going to nuke this dude. My sorceress does so much damage, I love it. Now, let's go ahead and shoot this guy here. This is going to reduce his armor. Boom! And then shoot him in the face again. Oh, you're taking quite a bit of damage. Yep, I ate a fireball. You, you, you're supposed to be able to dodge these fireballs that the guy just threw at me, so you gotta be careful about that. Uh, I need some mana, so we're gonna have to go ahead and steal mana from friends. And by stealing mana, what I mean is that essentially this character, which is uh, your healer, he does not regenerate mana at all. So you have to constantly steal life away from your party in order to have mana to keep healing your party, which kind of gives it a little bit of a dynamic feel to it. But to be completely honest, I just don't 
like his array of skills that much, and that is the reason why I hope that there's another healer um, available further on in the game. But either way, let's keep it going, steal some health from that guy. You, as you saw, I stole some health there. Uh, now, she's already used all her healing skills, so I'm gonna have to go ahead. Well, for starters, I want to really heal her, because she's about to die. And she will probably die if I don't dodge this. Damn it! Yeah. Arrows of Doom! Okay, two seconds. Damn it, I'm, I'm taking a big chance here, but what the hell, let's go for it. Dude, how about we shoot this guy instead, huh? How about that? Oh no, he's already shooting the mage. Okay, never mind. In that case... Uh, not even that. That's a little bit overkill. Should just go for this one instead. You, my friend, are being very problematic. Finally. Oh, uh, let's put the nourishing on that guy. Thank you. And now we need to basically nuke his ass down as fast as we possibly can. What does this do? Core Catalyst. Plus 15 dodge reduces the speed of his movement attack. Oh yeah, okay. This is when you're about to die. Kill that guy! Kill him! Boom, thank you. Fully healed up and good to go now. Now let's just take care of this. Shoot this guy in the face, because why the hell not? You should have enough thingamajigs to shoot this guy as well. And take off that skeleton archer. So as you guys can tell by now, uh, there's a very, very mechanical, uh, not mechanical, a very, very tactical aspect to playing this game. There's a lot of pause, pausing and issuing orders. The game is very tactical and is not afraid to say so. So that is definitely a good thing. And another thing that I like about this game is it doesn't really waste a lot of time like easing you into the story. It's just like, look, this game's about killing dudes and playing tactically. And there's a story behind it, but we're going to reveal it to you slowly as opposed to like, you know, spoon feeding you a whole bunch like half an hour cutscenes, whatever. No, it's just like it slowly tells you the story of the game, which currently... The only thing I really know is that uh, all of these dudes uh, that we control are part of this thing called um, Wheel Blades. Is it, is it Wheel Blades? I forget. Blades of the Wheel? I think it's Wheel Blades. Wheel Swords? I, mean, I, I forget, I can't believe it. <laughs> Let me just double check that real fast. Um, inventory, no it's not inventory, here. Biography, Nakas Contract by the Goldmongers Guild, blah 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 blah. This guy should say it. Wheel swords, yes, wheel swords. I was correct. It's not wheel blades, it is wheel swords. Either way, um, basically all of these characters are part of the wheel swords, which is apparently some kind of a guild that is bound to this uh, other entity called the Goldmongers. And we were sent to collect a debt, and basically as we got uh, the, the debt, which was we had to collect some orb or something. And as we collected that, there was like this guy who rebelled against us, and he was like, no, you cannot take it, it is mine, and whatever, and eventually they tell you that, um, yeah, they also have uh, idle chat, obviously, so when I'm uh, just blabbering on here, they're going to be uh, talking. But like I said, um, eventually that particular uh, guy tells you that your guild has been disbanded by the order of someone who is supposedly important, and uh, therefore you guys no longer have any power of any kind, so you have to basically fight your way out of his lands. And um, through fighting your way out of his lands, we meet up with this guy who's friends, who's a dwarf, and we also meet up with um, the other mage that you guys saw, like Lauren. Okay, but let's keep going here. We got Flesh Spectre, Black Priest, and Warrior of Saludel, and there's probably going to be some more skeletons that are going to spawn, so I want to go straight for the Black Priest. So that's what we're going to do. You are going to go here. Just engage on that guy, don't really worry about anything else. You, my friend, considering that these guys are in such a good position, you're gonna move there. Ah, look at him being all tricky again. Okay, but this time, I got you. I got you, my friend. And... Boosh! Debuffed. Now let's get you the hell out of here. Our tank is taking a lot of damage, let's shoot up a heal. Let's shoot another lightning at him, because why the hell not? 
And you, good sir, when you get there, you are going to shoot this guy in the face. And now you, since you're taking so much damage, let's just queue up as many defensive abilities as we possibly can. And here we go. We got a skeleton priest in our back. And this green thing that he's shooting is actually a heal, which is very bad. He's going to start healing that tank. Which is bad because the tank is the one thing that we had the most damage on right now. Yep, just like I expected. Although, Dwarf, really, why are you attacking that? It should be attacking this instead. Now, let's heal Priestess. Priestess, keep shooting up Lightning, because that's what you do best, really. Boom. Okay, let's move this guy out of the way. Okay, there's one big mess on the screen right now. Uh, I don't even know. Everybody's going for Naka, because that would be good. I need some mana, so we're going to have to leech some mana off of you. That guy's about to die, so let's put some nourishing prey there. Okay, and now we gotta kill that guy straight up. No fumbling around, just straight up destroy that guy. Because he's going to AoE heal us if we kill him. Kill it, kill it! What? Why was there no AoE heal? What the hell happened there? So sometimes the AoE heal doesn't work. I still was not able to identify what's causing that. Either way, let's. Get the hell out of here because there's AoE there and stuff, and let's just move everybody back because this is not looking too good. So let's reevaluate the situation here. How are your cooldowns doing? You're doing better now, so let's charge against that warrior. After you charge, activate your cool cooldowns and heal. Perfect. Taunt that guy so that he doesn't come at us. And lightning. Boom, okay, you're still not really... Oh, for a second there I thought she had gotten taunted, which would have been terrible. Now, let's go on ahead and debuff her armor again. Now, Dwarf, you really don't have a lot of health, and you don't have a lot of mana, so let's go ahead and leech life here, and then heal the Dwarf. Oh, damn it, I hit it when this happens. So basically, uh, this is an important mechanic to mention, which if you guys noticed, I just tried shooting a heal at my dwarf, but this guy was in the way, and he got healed instead. Yes, that's the way it works. It, it, it really sucks for me, because I basically made a big mistake, and I'm actually going to get penalized for that. I might even die because of that. Let's hope not. Come on, cast it, cast it. Yes, thank you. Kill that bitch. Now let's please get that off. Yes, thank you. And now let's leech some health from her and you run there run run and we got to kill this guy kill him kill him die thank you full on heal thank you very much now let's move this guy over here shoot this guy in the face and then we got to move our healer even though our healer's not really going to be doing much well actually we need to we need to move here because there's fire going on there and stuff, so we're not really doing a good job here. Uh, and let's just attack that Flesh Spectre, because that thing's about to die anyways. Oh, nice. A nice little channeled ability, right? That's fine. My tank's about to get his cooldowns back, so let's channel a whole bunch of more actions. Good old dwarf, why don't you come over here and reduce the armor on these dudes, because you're amazing like that. Boom! Thank you. And now, let's just all attack this Flesh Spectre, and since you got so much mana already, look at the damage on this lightning. Boom! I love it. I love it. Okay, now let's go on ahead, heal our dwarf, because dwarf is an amazing thing to have. And after healing him, let's drain health from him. Let's drain health from her as well, because why the hell not? Okay, we're actually not doing so bad. Now, I do have one complaint um, about this game, because as you guys can see, this this is a system that I can actually get into, because it's in fantasy RPG. There are several weird races. Like, this is like some sort of mechanical dinosaur mixed with a human. I'm not exactly sure what her background is, but you can actually check that if you so desire. If you go over here to the biography, it tells you all about Noka. Uh, also, if you go to her um, inventory page, it also tells you about her advantages and disadvantages. Like, for instance, Noka draws on the health of those she kills, 
taking 350 hit points per fatal hit. Her weakness is she consumes health to use her skills. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, then you also have the, um, the goblin here, and this goblin is Denzel's chances of a critical hit are increased by plus 15, and his critical hit multiplier by plus 50. Denzel does not gain HP when leveling up, and his armor levels are low. So obviously each character has an advantage and a disadvantage. Nella is a speedy magician and has no cooldown on the reuse of her skills. The duration of control effects suffered by Nella is increased by 50%. So if someone were to freeze her, which has happened before, she's basically going to get screwed over because she's going to be freezed for twice as long. This guy is immunized against the effects of anti-magic, however he also does not regenerate mana naturally and must use Feast on her allies to meet her needs, which is the thing I told you guys about uh, in regards to basically stealing health from your allies in order to survive. Then we have like Loris, he recovers 5 mana points each time he attacks, he's got no physical armor. And we have Frins, he reduces his attack cycles by 0.1 for 5 seconds on each attack that he makes, so basically he constantly speed up his attacks, but he can never make critical hits. I was actually not aware of the fact that he couldn't make critical hits, because I hadn't read all of it. But as you can see, there's a big diversity of characters. The story, while not obviously not the top most um, aspect of the game, is still pretty decent as far as I can tell. Something very important, uh, save often with F5, because you never know when you might just find the one fight that you get killed and you have to repeat uh, a whole bunch of times. There's also several fights which I have done which really require you to employ different strategies. Wow, this looks like a boss fight right here. So let's see what comes out of this one. Oh, orcs. I like killing orcs. However, I don't think we're going to be killing us into devil's way from chase to surrounded. No good comes from this land. All spirits restless here. Yub yub. Yub yub. Ho there! Identify yourself. Nella, tis Mocha and Bolom of Iliasan Quar. Happy we are to hear you. Rather than screams of dying. Mocha, Bo, we are glad to see someone who's not trying to kill us. Yes, but worse not over. Acheron, no one's friend. They know, weeding for us, informed, prepared. Something wrong. Only two. Mother is dead. Dead, even patron Guaman. Yes, we are all that remain from our core. The brittle bones curse us, say we'll saw die for their treachery. Lakshai said we'd be safe here, but there was an ancient agreement? Need to tell the bonies, friendly as my number two wife they are. This does not bode well. Our agreement with the barons has been in place since the last battle of the Khyber Pass, when Acheron was sealed an age ago. The goldmongers have traded news of the world outside in exchange for safe haven here. Aye, well maybe we just outlived our usefulness. Maybe it's that we just live. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to be a lot of that going on around here. I feel there is something else. Whispered voices telling me. But we must move with haste to the hold. Hopefully Lakshai and the other surviving patrons will be there. Something is not right here. And the sooner we find out... Yes, yes, but problem. Gate, seal it. Oh, magic, blood magic. Stop the rattling men and us. No, we passed. There is a way. Ooh, what you gonna do, like Loris? In dusty vaults where bodies decay, the only thing that shines is what remains. A circle drawn in sand, four swords together, fellows hand in hand. For the quar, one per man. So find the spokes to find haven in this land. So sheath your steel, my brothers of the wheel. For sanctuary lies through the deep and beyond this seal. Oh, aye, very pretty. And just what's that supposed to bloody well mean? Four seals that represent the wheel. Four seals to represent a quar. The signs of the guild will lead us to them. And you know where they are? No. 
They are hidden even from my unblinking eyes. We must find them and break them to unbar our path. We delay too long here. Enemies gather. Let us go destroy them. My sweet is right. Your counsel, my friends, as always, is true. To make haste, I say we break into two quarters to find these seals and meet at the gate by sunrise. <laughs> if we live to see it, it will be a black dawn. We will all live to see whatever morning brings. Denzel, Wenderu, and Bolam with me. Second Corps, Mocha, Knaka, Frinz, and Lechloris. Agreed? A fine choice of cores, my lady. New core? Do not fret, my sweet. We will all be together soon. Wheel swords are we all. Wheel swords all. Wheel swords all! Interesting. So I don't even get to choose? I, I guess I get to choose now. They always let you choose the people that you want in your party, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Oh, maybe not. Oh, I guess they're going to force me to play with Mocha here. I guess he's going to be the new healer that I was just asking for? Good. Let's see what he does. Mocha, level 1. Flint Char, channels for a maximum of 10 seconds is energy on a target, and the effect depends on what is targeted. Effect on allies increases by seven increases by 70% armor against all damage. Spirit of the Ancients. After three seconds, Machi immunizes five seconds an ally against crowd control effects. Ointment of Mokoro. Okay. He can use it at will on allies or enemies, however it costs 400 mana. Mystic Essence grants an ally the ability to regenerate 500 HP in 15 seconds. So he's more like a Resto Druid, so to speak. Good, because that's uh, more the kind of heal that I was looking for, considering that stuff is already hectic enough. So I assume that we're supposed to be going this way, as our friends are going to the other way. But since I'm a rebellious little bastard... I'm gonna go, Oh, it's closed. Why well, gotta be so evil? Yeah, sometimes they do allow you to explore a little bit. And um, usually if you explore parts of the map that they do not want you to explore. But I mean, not that they do. Basically, if you stray off the beaten path is what I actually meant. Um, they will uh, usually reward you. Oh yeah, we're supposed to level up. Almost forgot. We gotta level up good old like Loris after all. So I would say we go with uh, Death Wish, which is one of his best skills. And what does this do? Reduces the magic damage inflicted by the target. Changes the skill so that like Loris drains health by channeling the effect onto an enemy? No. Hell no. Reducing 40% of violence on inflicting 300 mana damage. Huh? If it dies before the end, it's going to manage damage to him and his allies for 100 minutes. Yes. We want this instead. And we're also going to upgrade this. This I don't want to upgrade just yet, because right now, for the enemies that I've been fighting, I'm not sure how useful that particular skill is. Projectile of Darkness inflicts 450 damage. The projectile explodes on impact to inflict zone damage. Projectile is henceforth ethereal. No, 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 no. Zone damage, baby. Enemies. Oh, it's also only on enemies. That's good. <laughs> no, allies if included. Okay, but then it will also do AoE on enemies. Okay, that's that's good enough. You, my friend, uh, I like your piercing shell. I really do. I have to be honest. Reduces 25% physical, uh, increases the duration of the reduction. And then there's also this, increases the damage inflicted. Now we're going to go with full-on damage for starters. Yeah, okay, we're looking good. Okay, and what's this? Morbid Spectre. I've never fought one of these, so we'll have to find out what's going down. You are going to go here and just do a banished blow on this guy. Hopefully he doesn't move. There we go. He did not move. Good stuff. And what are you going to do? Oh, you, pfft. That's pretty basic right here. You're going to shoot. Oh, damn it. Wait a second. You're going to have to shoot a little bit closer, like here. Okay, I can see enemies spawning over there in the back. So we're going to be wanting to move our healer here. Looks like our tank is also frozen. We're going to be wanting to put a death wish on this guy. And we need him to go down so that he does a decent AoE on 
Attack him. Oh, you're not gonna go down, really? Come on. Kill it. Kill it. Thank you. Okay, now you need to heal your ass up as fast as possible. And turn your attention over here. What's this, an archer? Okay, we need to put this archer... Like, go away, dude. And then just attack here. And you... You're gonna shoot the crap out of this dude. You need to heal because I haven't seen you heal a damn thing so far. There we go. Regenerate that. Might as well give him a normal heal as well. I need assistance. Damn it, she died. This is a big problem. Now, when characters die, you have about one minute to resurrect them, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I see this skeleton guy going for here. Where's this guy going for? I wish you could see their targets. Okay, it's not going for my dwarf, so the dwarf is resurrecting there. Does this thing also do damage? No, it doesn't. In which case, we need you to go there. Oh, sweet. Death Wish is available. In which case, we should just lure this guy behind the specter. And we cast Death Wish. And you move as well. Wait, 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 wait. Death Wish over there. Oh, no, they froze him. There's a whole bunch more of them coming, too. Friends, get your ass back here. You need to heal, Naka. Please heal, Naka. Thank you. Like Loris, please wake up. Nope, too slow. You still have to kill this guy at the very least. You need to regenerate like Loris. And you, good sir, are going to take a gamble, because dwarves are always taking gambles, let's face it. Oh, pretty please, get a death wish on this guy. Nope, too slow, never mind. What? AoE fear? Well, that sucks. That's going to leave a dent. Uh, the dwarf shooting these guys. We gotta get rid of that priest. That priest is gonna start healing. Well, Mocha, you're feared, so you can't do much. I don't like our odds. Let's fear this priest if we can. No, we can't. You're still feared, and you also have no mana to speak of, and you're gonna die. That's great. You need to heal him. Can you do things, Dwarf? I don't even know what to tell you. Wow, that was one hell of a long fear. Jesus Christ. Okay, Dwarf needs to start kiting. Yeah, the Dwarf's gonna die as well. What the hell are you doing? Well, oh my god, no death wish. No death wish. Not gonna happen. Wow, the dwarf is still alive. That is surprising. He's about to get rezzed. Problem is the dwarf is just gonna flat out die. Let's see if he can take a shot. Nope. He almost had it, but no dice. Oh, he can't cast Mystic Essence on himself. This could be a problem. In that case, let's regenerate the tank as much as we can. And let's taunt here. Let's move Lechlorus away. Must See if he can res. Yeah. Okay, you should be able to res like you've only got one melee on you. Come on, res. Good. Now, what can we do here? Uh, we can. Oh, we can't taunt. I was gonna say that we can taunt, but no, no dice. So we're just gonna shoot this guy in the face straight up. And death touch. Now let's try to drag him a little bit over here. Come on, go over there. Go over there. Go over there. Boom. Not too bad. Not too shabby. And that should pretty much get us going. And this guy's mana regenerates at a decent pace. There we go. Get rid of everyone there. That is another victory for the con. Let's save this bad boy. We also... Did we pick up any items yet? Nope. <laughs> that means that we basically have to give this guy whatever we have. Uh... Okay, that was pretty crappy. I should have saved some items. Uh, earlier, I destroyed all of my items to get more epics. Which sometimes is a good idea, and other times not so much. But yeah, this is the inventory system. Your characters never really change in terms of skins, as far as I'm aware. Unless they come up with skin packs or something, because they said that uh, the characters will not dynamically uh, change their aspect. 
that is a design decision because they really want to focus more on the combat and the experience um, of doing that combat. I'm afraid that this particular thing right here is going to be in a... It's either going to be a dead end, yeah, or there's going to be a chest. And this chest is going to be a trap. You guys want to bet? There's always traps in these damn chests. Oh, sweet. Loot. That will allow us to actually give this guy some more stuff. So, plus 6% healing received. Nope, that's crap. It's not really crap, but it's not really that good for someone who is supposed to be the healer. Physical damage. Whatever. What do we got here? Um, healing received, mana regen. Let's go for mana regen. 70 HP. Wow. Okay, give me that. I'll take that. 70 hit points. Because I want my tank to have as much life as possible. I wonder why. Immunize an ally against control effects. Okay, never mind that. Should be fine. Moving onwards. A couple more battles, but I think you guys at this point kind of get um, the basics of the game. One of the things that does uh, bother me a little bit is that a lot of times when I play these games, I like being able to know where my enemies are coming from. So it's like, considering that I've cleared all this stuff behind me, I would like it if nothing would spawn behind me because that bothers me a lot more than it should. And... Um, a lot of times that will happen, like enemies will spawn behind you and even times I've had to uh, face off against an arena of enemies in a really tight spot, very uh, little room to move and dodge and yeah, that gets annoying. What's this? What the hell does this do? I have no idea what that thing does. But it seems that it's going, uh, it seems that it's moving along with us, so we probably have to take it and bind it together with the other green thing that we see there. Okay, we got a black paladin and a black priest, so we actually want you moving there, if you don't mind. Now, like Loris, you're not really gonna do much for now. Neither are you. Let's just see what happens here. What's this? Okay, so you're going to become really, really strong in terms of armor. That's fine. We can deal with that. This would be cool. Nope, never mind. He moved. It's okay, he's just going to align himself over there, so we'll just shoot like so. Uh, uh, uh. We still have that skeleton mage over there. That's going to be a problem. Let's fear him. And let's also get you to shoot the crap out of the, that uh, black priest. You can attack there. And start spamming your survival skills. Mocha, if you could direct your attention here and... Wow, that's really good. Oh, damn it, I saw it coming and I did not dodge it. That's fine. Shoot a banished blow there. Nice hit. Now let's put a death... Oh, I would have put a death wish in there. Hopefully we can do it eventually. Kill that black priest. Kill it! Good. Now the hell with that black paladin. Let's just kill the skeleton mage instead. Shoot that. Shoot that. And go. Boris, what are you going to do? Oh. There's no real justification for doing that. Oh, here it comes from the back. This guy's channeling probably one of those arrows. A finger of death. That's fine. We got our own fingers of death here. That's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to shoot you in the face. And then I'm going... I was going to do death on that guy, but no. The hell with that. But I'm actually going to smack your face. And shoot you in the face. Actually... We will take away some of the armor instead. Yeah. Your like Loris, you need to move away from that. You need to go ahead and put some Mystic Essence on the tank, as well as heal the dwarf, maybe? No, the dwarf is doing fine. The dwarf is actually going to move his ass down here. What's that? That's another mage. Okay, we're looking good. Like Loris, can you do anything? Nope. 
Okay, in that case, fear that mage. Oh, sweet. The archer is actually shooting at the tank. That's perfect. I like that. Look upon me. Uh, we shouldn't really do Death Wish because it's just going no to be a waste of an AoE, but let's nuke him. Nuke, 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 nuke. Nice. Uh, you're going to actually go on this mage. There's a relic of nothing this there. We can just pick that up. A couple of more stuff. Whoa, 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 whoa. I stopped paying attention and that is what I get. The dwarf got shot the crap. And let's heal up a little bit. Nice. Now, unfortunately, Macha can't really heal himself, which is bad. really wish he could heal himself. I'm actually going to put Death, Death's Touch on this guy, because I don't have a whole lot more that I can really do. Man, that dwarf, when he starts going, it's like nobody's business. Let's see what we got in terms of upgrades here. Hopefully something for this guy. 6% healing received. 7% magical damage. Come on, no healing done. There we go. 9% healing done. 9% physical damage. We probably want to do this. Uh, what else? Earrings. 8% healing done. Yes, you will take this. Any healing done relics? Yes, we got this one. Because the one that we have currently is not that great, so we will take this one instead. Okay, looking pretty decent. But yeah, this is uh, Arc Clash Legacy. I understand that you guys are probably uh, a little bit bored, maybe, because... This game does demand that you, um, this game does demand that you kind of like take your time on each battle and that is obviously what I've done. Uh, uh, but I think you guys still get a pretty good idea of what the game is all about. Also gave you guys a little bit of a story there and you guys can tell that the game basically has a pretty good voice acting. I mean, it's not the best you've ever seen, but it's still, if you consider that this is mostly a tactical RPG, it's still pretty decent voice acting in my opinion. But yeah, this is Arc Lash. Arc Lash Legacy. My one complaint so far is when they actually lock me in an arena with a whole bunch of enemies or when enemies start spawning behind me, it bothers me a little bit. But apart from that, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. And as per usual, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.